Hey homesteaders, welcome back to the homestead. How often do you get firewood that's cut just way too long for your small wood stove for your off-grid homestead? Today we're gonna show you how to make a jig for your chainsaw that's gonna cut this down to size to fit in your stove. Let's go. So why would I need to make a jig to cut down my firewood? Well, this is our Wood Pro 1500 stove. It's great for the size of home we have. This is rated to heat 1,000 square feet and it's at 42,000 BTUs. Our house is about 1,660 square feet and the main living area and our master bedroom, which is where all the heat goes from this, is about 1,000 square feet. But this thing is small. Let's show you the firewood that we cut and the firewood that we purchased this year and show you how it fits inside. So this is a piece of firewood that we purchased this year. If you haven't seen our video on how to purchase firewood without getting ripped off, click on the card on the top of the screen. This piece right here, we cut from our property. So if you remember in the other video talking about purchasing firewood, we told you that in this area of the country, Firewood is cut in 18 to 20 inch lengths instead of 16 inch lengths. And as you can see here, this one is actually just a little bit under 18 inches. The one that we cut is exactly 16 inches. So on the interior of our stove to the interior of the fire brick, we have about 18 inches. So let me show you. This piece is pretty slim and it's pretty long. Maybe if I split it in two, that's going to fit in here. But this piece itself, actually does not fit in this stove at all. And this is one of the shorter pieces that I purchased. So if you're not cutting the wood yourself, you've got an issue. So here's the 16 inch log that we cut on our property. Now that fits in there with no problem. But the way we build fires and the way we get them started is that we angle the wood. Now, if you've seen that video, which you can also go look at at the top of the screen, you'll see how that really helps your fire get started almost instantly in your fireplace. But for us, we don't have a lot of trees on our homestead that are of burn quality. So we end up purchasing firewood from local suppliers. And it's always cut too big for our stove. So let's show you how to make that jig. And additionally, if you want big, large chunks of firewood that are gonna burn overnight so you don't have to tend it throughout the night, then they're gonna have to be cut much shorter. Let's show you how to make this jig. We're using scrap wood, but you can buy new if you want. The rationale behind using scrap wood is you're going to be cutting firewood with your chainsaw so it's going to get torn up. So if you've got the scrap, use it. But you will need 2x6s, 2x4s, 3 quarter inch plywood, and four, a 4x4. Four four. So to start, we're going to cut 4 pieces of 2x6 that are 30 inches long and then 2 that are 24 inches long. Our jig is just going to accommodate one piece of firewood in its length. We're gonna stack that up on our sides, which are the 30 inch tall sides, and that's gonna give us the ability to cut about six or seven pieces of firewood at once. Now our side rails, we're gonna strategically place the two by fours and the two by sixes. So pay attention to where we do that so that we can cut the length of our firewood at 12 inches. We do 12 inches because we make our fire in that V-shaped pattern in that very small stove. So for our plywood, we want four pieces that are nine inches long and no more than four inches wide. We also want one piece that's 30 inches long and no more than five and a half inches wide. So on our bottom rail, which is a 24 inch piece, we're gonna place on one end, one 30 inch two by six. From there, we're gonna start working our way this way. The two by four is gonna be in the middle. I'll show you the measurements of where they go. We're gonna place our first two by six support rail flush with the edge of our bottom rail. From there, we're gonna come over 10 inches to this outer edge of our two x four. Now our second two x six is going to come over 12 and a half inches from our starting edge, leaving a two and a half inch gap between the two x four and that last two x six. And that gap is critical because that's where we are going to be making our cuts with our chainsaw. Now just do the same identical thing on the other side. From here, we're gonna use our nine inch scraps of plywood. 
on the top. We're gonna use two on the top and then one on either end. So for however long you make these bottom rails for your needs, just make sure that you keep these pieces of plywood out of the gaps where your chainsaw is gonna be cutting. So on our starting side on this end, this is what, where we want our last piece of plywood. And that's just to hold all the wood even on the inside on its starting side. So for the project, we use two and a half inch deck screws, three inch deck screws, and one and a quarter inch. It's up to you what you want to use. One of the last things we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole through our two four by four pieces here that are eight inches long. And those are going to act as our weights. You can use metal, but it's better, honestly, if you use heavy scrap wood like this because you don't want your chainsaw coming through all of your wood and hitting a big metal weight on the other side, just messing up your chain. We're just going to drill a hole about an inch and a half down from the top through both of these, and then I'll show you how to attach them. So we've just got some contractor's twine here. You're going to need two pieces of that twine or whatever string you use that are at least seven feet long. Loop it through the hole on your weight and tie it off. From there, we are going to tie it around the bottom rail between the two by four and our starting two by six. That's where the first one is going to go. The second one is going to go on the outside of your last two by six. You don't want anything in that area where you're cutting. Now that we have everything together, let's go show you how it works. So as you could see, the saw wanted to pull the firewood pieces toward me, and that's what the sides are for, so you can get a nice cut without it pulling each piece toward you. And also those pieces of plywood on the bottom prevent the saw from going all the way through. When you feel that bottom uh, piece of firewood release, stop and pull back up, then you're through. So you don't cut through your bottom rails. If you wanna put a thicker cross member on the bottom, like a two by four, you can do that. You can see I went through a little bit, but it's no big deal. It's all just scrap wood. We know this video is gonna be helpful for all you small stove owners. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how to start a fire in your wood stove the first time, every time. Have a great day. We love you. See you in the next video. Bye.